I audible? Uh, I can't see all of you in one gallery. Amen. Praise yes, Pastor. You are audible. Praise God. Yes. Praise, Praise God. God. Hallelujah. Uh, greetings to all of you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I bring tidings of good joy to all of you this Resurrection Sunday. I mean, it's such a great joy to see you all in one frame. With my two eyes, I can see all of you in one frame. Hallelujah. Amen. Even though we are in different places, you know, it's such a great joy to that through technology, we are able to meet. So the barriers of denomination, the barriers of every other thought is all fallen down. The walls of Jericho has fallen down so we can see each other. I mean, we can glorify God together. And this is kind of a small experience that one day we will all have in heaven. Amen. Uh, do we have something right now coming up? Uh, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Thank you so much for uh, Pastor Sam Koti for having me today uh, to speak to all of you. I uh, give you and your family greetings, the elders in the church, all the members and dear pastor who's the guest also in this uh, meeting today. And uh, I can see my mom also. Uh, she is from Dallas. She is joined in this meeting. You know, with all these things going around in this world, the Corona thing happening. You know, it is it is a kind of a message uh, from the from from a God, a wake up call. If you can see, you can understand it. It's a wake up call for the world to know that man has reached Mars, but today he cannot get out on a street. You know, so it's kind of a wake up call call for all of us. So, uh, you know, it reminds me uh, when we were in school, since my mom is over here, I just recall one uh, incident, what happened, you know, when we were all in school, mom used to wake us up in the morning, get up, get up, you know, she always used to shout, get up, get up on the top of her voice. We were like sixth grade or seventh grade, I don't remember clearly, but uh, being the youngest, I had the extra privilege to wake a little late, you know. Uh, so my sister, my brother, so mom used to do this every day. But one day, mom didn't uh, just said by words, but she brought a bucket full of water and she threw it on my face. That was a wake up call. <laughs> and after that, I have never had to wait for a second time for her to tell me, get up, it's time to go for school. I remember that day the bed was completely wet because of the water that was thrown over me. You know, and that was a wake up call. And after that, let me tell you, even if it's my wife or anyone, you know, the first I get up quickly because that was a quick wake up call. So this is kind of a wake up call for all of us in the world that has come through this kind of a COVID and Corona. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. It's good to be uh, knowing God and, you know, to be in the presence of God. And uh, today being Resurrection Sunday, I mean, it's, it's great news for the church. Good news for all of us that we serve a living God. When all the tombs are closed, there's only one tomb that is open, and that is our Lord's tomb. It just says, he's not here, he is risen. And today we believe that his presence is there with us, as per his promise. He said, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you, I will be with you even till the end of time. The same promise is applicable to us today, and we believe on the resurrected power of Christ operating in our life. Amen. I want to bring a word for, for, to all of you, a word that will encourage you, a word that will motivate you, and above all, a word that can challenge you in these times, that how uh, soon we are going to see our Lord coming in the clouds to receive all of us to glory. Amen. It's a time of uh, preparation, of a great rapture, that we are all expecting in the days to come. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And all the incidents was already foretold in the Bible, already warned in the Bible that all these things are going to happen. Amen. So for us, it is good news because this was already informed. You know, the person who's already been informed about all the things that's going to happen, he's the most uh, um, blessed man. He knows everything that's going to happen. And that's what you know. Whenever you read a novel, and you like some characters of that novel in the first two chapters. You always like to go to the last chapter to see whether that character will be alive. And when you know that character is alive, then you will, you're more motivated to read the rest of the novel right from the beginning. Correct? Amen. So when you know the revelation, the book of revelation, that the church will be taken up, that the Lord is going to come, and that we're all going to be with him forever and ever, it gives us, gives us a great motivation in this hour also. 
that our Lord is alive and everything is well taken care of. Amen. We are safe and secure in the hands of our Savior. Amen. I want to open a scripture for you. Amen. Uh, if you can open the New Testament uh, to, to come to the epistle written by Paul to the church in Philippi. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. Amen. Just want to read it out for you. Amen. Are you all there? Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings. Become like him in death. And so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The message of resurrection is a message of hope. The message of resurrection tells you that dead, death is not the end. Death is just a beginning of a great life ahead for you. The message of resurrection tells us no matter what the world puts on you, there is a savior who will save you even out of every situation. The message of resurrection is not just to be heard. Um, the message of resurrection is to be believed and to be lived in Christ. Amen. And one thing that Paul says that he desires is to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. That was the only desire that Paul had all his life. That I may know Christ. A man who has been doing miracles in the name of Jesus. A man who has established churches. A man who was burning with passion for Christ. Towards the mid time of his ministry, he's saying that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Today being resurrection, we just heard during the beautiful time of worship, amen, the scripture that I live and the keys of death are in my hand, the Lord Jesus said to John in the island of Patmos. These are the same keys that God said to Peter, I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loosen on earth will be loosened in heaven. These are the same keys. The heads of hell shall not prevail against the church. When Jesus said, I will build my church, the powers of hates will not prevail against. Why? Because the keys of hates are now with Jesus. Amen. And that gives us great joy that death is not the end. Death is just a beginning of a great life with Christ in the eternal glory. Amen. Death is not the end, but death for a believer is meeting Christ, living with Christ. So Paul says his desire is only to know whom? Christ. That I may somehow know Christ. Amen. You know, the, I heard this example. Uh, Pastor M.A. Varghese of Bangalore Church. They have a big church in Bangalore. And his grandchildren... When some elders were telling in the church the children to be silent and giving them disciplinary uh, words, you know, actions and guidelines, the grandchild of Pastor M.A. Varghese, he looked at the, this elder brother and said, you know who we are? You know who we are? We are the grandson of Pastor M.A. Varghese. You know, the connection. You know, you can, you can tell others what you want to, but you know who we are. We know him personally. We are his grandchildren. We are so much close to him. Amen. Something that comes out of confidence and you know, that somehow I may know Christ and the power of his resurrection. Today, people of God, it's important that Jesus is, didn't come just for doing miracles. Jesus didn't come just to save, but Jesus wants to, us to experience the power of resurrection even when we live. Hallelujah. The manifestation of his presence in our life. The demonstration of his power through the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that is what we need to understand today. Lord, amen, take the whole world away, but give me Jesus. That I somehow may know Christ and the power of his resurrection. Paul writes this to the church when he was in prison. When he was going through 
lot of tribulation, lot of persecution by himself. But still he says that somehow I may know Christ. I want to know Christ. Yet to know the power of his resurrection and the participation in his sufferings become like him in his death. And so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That kind of a generation God wants to raise in the end times. A generation that will be fearless. A generation that will be blameless. A generation that is passionate about knowing Christ. Hallelujah. Not just knowing Christ for our needs, but knowing Christ even in my suffering. Knowing Christ even when persecution is going on. Knowing Christ that I, may, I somehow may understand the power of his resurrection. Hallelujah. And this day morning, hallelujah. Amen. The resurrection message of Jesus is, you know, when Jesus was in, inside the tomb, the Roman government seal was on it. And the Lord Jesus had told his disciples that I will be crucified. But on the third day, I will rise again. But you know, the disciples, they didn't listen to the word completely. So when he died, they forgot the words. And now they are frightened and afraid and inside a room. Afraid of the Jews, afraid of the Roman government. And they forgot what Jesus said, that there is a third day coming. Hallelujah. If there's anyone going through persecutions, trouble and suffering, Amen. Blessed be the name of a Lord who said, there is a day of resurrection. There is a day of hope. There is a day that he will come out. Hallelujah. Amen. So we have this great joy. Even if I walk through the valleys of the shadows of death, Amen. his rod and his staff, they comfort me. Even if I walk through the valley of dry bones, I know his word will come. And there will be life even in the valley of dry bones. Hallelujah. Even if I am in the island of Patmos, when there is all gates are closed for me, how many of you will believe that the gate of heaven is open for the believer? Hallelujah. How many of you will believe that the revelation and the presence and the manifestation of his glory will come down into the situation that you are right now? Amen. And so even in the prison, Paul has this word of encouragement to the church saying that do not worry. We are called to suffer with the persecution and the suffering of Christ. We are called to carry the glory even if this body is to be troubled by sufferings. We are called to know Christ. Even in the darkest hour, people of God have one passion that somehow I may know him and the power of his resurrection. It is not what you have achieved in this world, but it is what you need to know that Jesus didn't come only to do miracles, but also to give you the power of resurrection. The message of resurrection is a message of eternal life in Christ. The message of resurrection is to tell you there is a life beyond this body. There is a life beyond this world. And that world that the Lord has created is heaven and he is waiting. Hallelujah. But how will you live this life is the question that you need to ask yourself. Jesus told to his disciples very clearly, do not leave Jerusalem. Even before when he was ascending to heaven, Acts chapter 1 verse 3, he said, do not leave Jerusalem. Amen. What does Jerusalem say? Jerusalem is the house of prayer. Jerusalem is the house of peace. He says, do not leave the house of prayer. Do not leave your home right now. Why? Because I go to the Father. And I pray to the Father that he will send you the Holy Spirit. And when you shall receive power from above, what will you become? Acts chapter 1 verse 8. You will become my witness. Today, Jesus is in our life. But is the tomb covered? Or have you allowed the tomb door to open so that people may know and see Jesus through your life? The tomb should not be closed. The tomb is open 
so that the world may come to know that Jesus is in you and he is now doing his works through you. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are the powerhouse today. You are the hands and the feet of the Lord Jesus today. Paul says that somehow I may know Christ and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering. What does the fellowship of suffering mean? It doesn't mean that you also have to carry your cross and walk to the Mount of Golgotha. No, it means that even in the end time, the church will be persecuted. The church has to face a persecution. Hallelujah. That somehow, you know, it's not about just receiving from the Lord. It is also about what can I do for the Lord? What he did for us on the cross is what God the Father gave to us. But the question today is, what are we giving him back through our life? What are we saying to the Lord? Lord, use my life for your glory. That even when suffering comes, I may know you. Even when I have to go through problems, that I may know the resurrected power of Christ. That I may have fellowship, amen, with your suffering. Hallelujah. Amen. And become in the image in the in his death also you know we, we we also always talk about you know living a life in the image and likeness of christ image and likeness of christ is also meaning that you will be misunderstood by the world you will be persecuted by the world very soon the antichrist is going to appear very soon there will be one government then very soon they are going to sign the treaty for one God. Amen. And you know what? All the faith will come together and they will force everyone that they will have to keep all the idols. Even in the church, you will have to keep all the other idols. And in the other places also, they will keep the statue of Jesus. One government in the end. Are you ready to go through persecution? Are you ready to say, Lord, even if I have to go through that, I will be faithful till the very end that I may know about the fellowship of your suffering. Hallelujah. In the end times, many people's love will become cold. In the end times, many people will leave Christ. The same thing that happened on the cross. They all ran away. There was only one disciple at the cross. In the end times, there, is, there will only be a remnant I mean, who will be faithful? I mean, I want to challenge you with this message. Will you say, Lord, help me to be part of that remnant? Amen. Who are waiting upon the second coming, who have not maligned their body, who have not defiled their body, but who are waiting for the second coming of our Lord. Hallelujah. That I may know the fellowship of his suffering. That I may live a life of resurrected in Christ. Amen. That I may look forward, hallelujah, for the coming of my Lord on the clouds, hallelujah. Even when your body is tortured, even when there's great famine coming in, even when the Antichrist is coming in, how many of you will say along with Paul today, hallelujah, that I may know Christ and the sufferings, hallelujah, that he went through. That somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead, hallelujah. Amen. You know, people of God, as long as we are in the body, we will have temptations. We will have tribulations. We will have sickness. We will have troubles. Jesus said, hallelujah, in this world, you have many tri tribulations. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. Amen. We serve a Lord who has overcome death. We serve a Lord who has overcome the devil. We serve a God who says that I will give you my Holy Spirit and you will become my witness. Amen. Are we witness of the Lord today as ourselves? Hallelujah. Are we comfortable in the chair? Hallelujah. Or are we willing to take this Jesus who's come into our life and not cover him with the tomb? The tomb has not to be closed, but break that seal so that Christ inside of you, the glory inside of you is revealed to the ends of the earth. How many of you will say, Lord, use me for the end time persecution. Use me for the end time revival. Use me, Lord, for the end time revival that is going to come upon church. Hallelujah. 
I mean, the Lord is looking for Pauls. The Lord is raising Davids. The Lord is raising, hallelujah, Ezra's and Daniel's who will not defile their body, who will not defile their Christian life, but will say, whatever happens, whatever price we have to pay, we will lift up the banner of Christ. We will go through that suffering. We will go through that pain, but we will be an encouragement to the body of Christ. And that is what Paul writes. Even when he is in the prison, he is encouraging the church. Hallelujah. He is encouraging the church. Amen. People of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's encourage ourselves today with this. You know, there are only two scriptures that says, if you open Matthew chapter 5, if you open Matthew chapter 5, I'm going to give you those two scriptures that says, these are the people who will inherit the heaven. Hallelujah. Inherit the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 5, verse 3. And Matthew chapter 5, the same chapter, verse 10. 5 verse 3 says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The whole of heaven is going to be given to those people who are poor in spirit. The rest will be comforted. The rest will have righteousness. They will be filled. They will have they will see God. They will be peacemakers. But come to verse 10. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Verse 11. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Then he says rejoice and be glad. Because great is your reward in heaven for the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Hallelujah. I want to encourage the body of Christ. Hallelujah. There are two scriptures in this when we read that they are the ones, amen, who's the Lord is saying, I will give you the entire heaven. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. There are people going to misunderstand you. They will not like your faith. They will talk bad about you. They will persecute you. They will mock you. But you can say along with Paul today, Lord, I thank you for you have given me fellowship even in your suffering. To know Christ means to be rejected by the world. To know Christ is to be saying no to the patterns of Babylon. To know Christ is to be rejected by the world and to be persecuted. The Lord is raising an end time army. May you be one of them. Hallelujah. The Lord is raising an end time army who will, will be faithful till the very end. And Jesus therefore said, if you be faithful till the very end, you will receive the crown of life. There was persecution happening once upon a time in Romania. And there were some 10 missionaries, 10 missionaries who were about to be persecuted by the military. And they were given the last chance. Deny Christ now and you will live. They were given a last chance. Nine said, we deny the world and we receive Christ. We will not deny Christ. But one of them thought, even if I say that in my heart, I will continue to serve God. But one of them decided to deny Christ verbally. He said, God knows the heart. So I will just say it verbally outside. You know, when he did that, the one of the military man who was having the gun in his hand to shoot, he ran towards these 10 and said, I need that crown. I need that crown. You know what he saw? He saw 10 crowns coming down upon the 10 missionaries. But then he saw one crown being lifted up again to the man who was denying Christ. That one crown was lifted up. This man's eyes got opened and he came running forward. He was one of the military men. He came running forward and said, I accept Christ as my savior. I need that crown. Hallelujah. I need that crown. People of God, there's a crown that has been made for you. Hallelujah. There is a crown, amen, that is made for everyone who is a believer. Hallelujah. 
Let that crowd not be taken away from you from this world. Hallelujah. But that you may know the, the, the fellowship of his suffering. Amen. So somehow attaining the resurrection from the dead. The last enemy is death. What does death mean? Death means separation. That is what Jesus cried out to the Father. Father, Father, why art thou forsaken me? Death. Amen. Death is the last enemy. And even that enemy, Jesus conquered on the cross. Hallelujah. Today, people of God, you and I, we don't have any enemy. If there's any enemy, it is the accuser of the brethren, the devil. But that devil is under the feet of the church. Amen. And so be of good cheer. Amen. The Lord has called us to become overcomers. And if you read Revelation chapter 1, 2, and 3, Jesus said, He that overcometh will sit with me in the throne room. He that overcometh will I give him the living manna. He that overcometh will I take his name before my father. I want to challenge you. Are you willing to become an overcomer? Hallelujah. I want to ask you this question. Hallelujah. Are you ready to give your life to Christ? Amen. It is always not, you know, like what can I receive from God? But now it is time that to say, Lord, what can I do for you? How can this body become the temple of the Holy Spirit? Lord, renew my mind. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. So that I may become a living sacrifice. That I may place myself onto the altar. And that the fire from heaven may come down and consume us. That our flesh will die every day. So that the spirit of God will be seen manifesting through our spirit. We do not be conformed to this world. Do not go by the pattern of this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is acceptable, perfect will of God. You know the will of God? The will of God is that you become in the image and likeness of God. The will of God, that is you also, you prepare your heart, your body to have fellowship with his suffering. That one day when you come, hallelujah, when he calls you, he will say, come unto me, my faithful servant. Enter into my rest. Hallelujah. Let that be the desire of our heart today. That somehow I may know Christ. What is the message of resurrection? The message of resurrection is that Jesus is alive within us. Through his spirit. And so let's show him to the world. Let's be a true witness. A living witness. A suffering witness. And project Christ into this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, the pains of this world are temporary. The struggle of this world is temporary. But there is an eternal glory that is far more better than this thing that you are going through. Hallelujah. Amen. This is just a sign that Jesus is on his way and very soon he will come on the clouds. But that day when he calls our name, amen, he will not ask you how much money you earned, how much salary you earned, which company you worked, but he will ask you how many souls you won for me. How many you saved? How many you brought to my kingdom? Hallelujah. Each one of you is talented. Each one of you has the Holy Spirit. Today, we just need to pray, Lord, Help me grow more and more in the word and to understand the calling over my life that somehow I may know Christ. The fellowship of his suffering that I will also be resurrected one day from the dead in Jesus name. Hallelujah. I leave this message with you. Amen. An unending message. Let this message not end, but this message continue by the Holy Spirit burning your heart. Asking you deep questions. How many days of your life you have already lived. But how many have you able to save? And with the remaining days God granted grace over your life. How what are you going to do for the remaining days of your life? 
Lord, what can I do for you? Can we all close our eyes? Hallelujah. I want to close over here. But giving you a question. Amen. You ask, hallelujah, Lord, what can I do for you? I may know Christ and the power of his anointing, the power of his resurrection, so that, Lord, we may become witness, true witness, a living witness, a faithful witness, even till the last breath over our life. That the Christ in us will become a hope of glory for this dying world. That the Christ in us is not just buried inside of us, but is manifested through our spirit into this world. That we may share the sufferings of the body of Christ. That we may encourage somebody who is going through pain. We may partake someone's suffering along with that brother, that sister. That we may become a motivation, an encouragement to someone out there and say, Lord, amen, I want to be partaken also of your suffering. It's not about just enjoying the blessing, but also become partaking of his suffering. That somehow, Father God, the crown of life that has been made for me will not be taken away. I don't want to trade heaven for anything of this world. Because this world and everything of this world is perishable. Everything of this world is perishable. But there's an eternal hope. There is an eternal place for you. Jesus said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. And I go to prepare one for you. And when that is done, I will come and I will receive you. Hallelujah. The message of resurrection. Hallelujah. Is also a question to us today. If Christ is alive, how are we using him in our secular world? If Christ is alive, what are we giving through him to this sick world? The other day I was praying for a brother who was, who was troubled by demons. And while praying for him over the phone, the demons started to scream. They said, don't take the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. The demons are worried if you take the name of Jesus in faith. Pray for someone who's captivated by demons. Pray for someone amen, who's suffering, mental suffering. Amen. Going through a lot of pain. Hallelujah. Amen. So that you may manifest the power of his resurrection through your faith, through your life. And by your prayer, people will come into the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray that in the coming days, hallelujah, amen. Amen, eternal life church of God will raise, hallelujah, amen. young people amen. who will be, hallelujah, bold, amen. who will have courage, hallelujah, to face, hallelujah, every Goliath in Jesus' name, to overcome every fear, to conquer every fear in Jesus' name. I pray that the church will raise, hallelujah, leaders like Joshua, hallelujah, like Daniel with the spirit of excellence, hallelujah, amen, like Paul with the passion of the word of God, amen, and they will go out, hallelujah, they will burn for Christ, hallelujah, and they will win souls, and when your name is called, hallelujah, to go to heaven, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. May the Lord say, amen, through your ministry, through your life, uh, many people could come into the kingdom of heaven. That is the greatest joy. That will be the greatest joy to hear. Hallelujah. Amen. May your life be a living testimony for the dying world. Amen. There's a phrase that says, amen, there's an English phrase that says, history teaches us that history teaches us nothing. Amen. We need to learn from the book of Acts, history, Amen. how the church, the early church, even they risked their own life, but they took the gospel to the ends of the world. Amen. May that be repeated even till the end, in the end time, where Jesus said, I will pour out my spirit in the end times. Amen. And you will prophesy, you will dream, and you will go out. Hallelujah. Amen. So that you will carry this torch 
amen into this dark world today there are many people amen i i get this message there are many people hallelujah through doctors that they are suffering because of depression they are suffering because of the fear of death they are suffering because not just because of corona but but what will happen because people are not going to get salary the job they're going to lose they're worried they're they're under depression people of god let me tell you the church has the answer amen shall we pray i want to pray for you amen each one of you hallelujah amen may you be the end time paul amen that i may know christ that i may know christ hallelujah that I may know Christ and the power of his resurrection. Let it become an experience. Let it become a demonstration through your life. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time. Mm -hmm. I thank you for your children, Lord, who are connected from various parts, Father God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Bless them, I pray. Mm -hmm. May the power of resurrection come inside of them, Father God. Mm -hmm. May their eyes be enlightened. May their spirit be enlightened. Hallelujah. May the Lord be burned inside, Father God, in the passion to carry your word. May they be challenged this day, Lord, Father God, not to be in their comfort zones, but to come out of it, Father God. Amen. That they may, Lord, live a life that is worthy and pleasing to you, Father God. Lord, as the body of Christ, amen, let none of us defile the body, which is your temple. Let none of us, Father God, become unholy in these end days. That we may be holy just like you are holy. Bless your children. Bless your children, I pray. Bless eternal life, church, Father God. Even as they are prepared to carry the gospel, even as they are preparing themselves, Father God, to raise ministers, to raise the youth, to raise the church, Father God. May the Holy Spirit bless them. May the Holy Spirit equip them. May the Holy Spirit give them the hope beyond the grave. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for doing it. Unto you, Lord, we give all the glory, honor, and praise. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us. I take it personally, Lord, Father God. Thank you for speaking to me also, Lord. Hallelujah. To you, Lord, we give all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh